guys, welcome to part two of Painting the Dark uh, Angels Tactical Marine. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and do some of the metallics. Uh, for that I'm going to use um, Vallejo Model Colour Gunmetal Grey. I really love this paint. It gives uh, a lovely finish and it waters down really well. So basically what I've done guys, let's just move this in so you can see what I'm doing. Added a little bit to my palette. I always add a bit of water to it, it's quite a thick paint and of course it flows a lot better if you water it down a little. And basically all I'm going to do now is literally paint the joins between his legs. There's a bolt gun, I call it bolt gun. Try to keep it nice and neat. It's not too hard to do between the joints in the legs, to be honest. The highlights really popping now, isn't it, guys? You can see it quite well up against the the dark green. The thing to remember when you're doing some of these details is don't struggle with your brush because at some point your brush is just not going to be. Uh, what well, is going to be too big basically so switch down to a, a finer brush make your life a lot easier rather than struggle just putting a little bit in the vents on the uh, backpack it's going to have a, a wash in there anyway which will tidy up any little splashes that inevitably do happen and of course the good old grenade I'll give that a lick of this colour and then of course there we go you have the little sections on the wrist And every now and again on some of these models there's like little tube areas. Like so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the model with the uh, good metal and uh, I'll be back guys. Okay so basically I've gone over the model now and I've painted all the areas that I want in the metallic. Um, so I've basically picked out the undersides of the um, backpack, the little dark angels sword there, all of the leg joints, the uh, grenade. Uh, some of the areas on the plasma on the, on the plasma gun because um, they're generally red weapons but I just wanted a little bit of metallic on there. I've opted to do the uh, chest eagle and a couple of the little bars on the helmet and at the back of the backpack there just how I showed you previously. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use Citadel Colour Scab Red. I'm giving it a good shake guys because you don't want to... <coughs> Excuse me. Let's put a little bit on the palette. I'll put it in there so you can actually see. Once again, watering it down a little bit. Now the areas of red on these things generally are just the weapon and the shoulder. What I'm going to do could be epic fail guys so you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to just paint a little bit too much on my brush there. That's it. I'm not worried that it might be too thin at the end of the day I don't want to um, drown the model or lose any detail at the same time that's ok I'm going to do that little shoulder rest in like a leather colour I think I'm not too concerned about the, the glowy area just yet or if any paint gets on there because I'm 
tween with the idea of doing some OSL on that bit. So you get the gist. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to finish this weapon off and do the uh, arrow on the uh, pauldron, and we'll be back. Okay, so, yeah, I've applied the red, uh, which was, yeah, scab red. As you can see, I've just given it a fairly thin coat over the areas that I want to be red. On there, and on there. Now what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm just going to move away from the red a little bit firstly. I've now got uh, Argox Earthshade, Wash, or Shade as they now call it, from GW. And what I'm going to do, uh, sort of like one and one basically, one dab of uh, Earthshade to warm water. And, excuse me guys, let's just cheat a little bit again. Which is why I didn't glue it on. Firstly, I'm going to just apply some wash to the chest eagle. You can do it um, neat if you wish, or water it down. I switch between the two personally. Be careful not to put too much on, because it will run onto your model, and you don't want that to happen. Just dab it on. That's nice. And then very carefully, a little bit up there, a little bit up there, and of course in the mouthpiece. Yeah, that's nice. And of course at the back of the backpack generally let it flow in there give it some nice shade there we go in between the legs and so forth so what I'm going to do guys I'm going to go ahead and complete the wash okay so I've given the model a wash over the metallics and a little bit over the uh, scab red I did on the plasma gun there as you can see all the metallics have been toned down now and given them a nice little bit of shade so they're popping just that little bit more now what I'm going to do now I'm just going to take a little piece of uh, citadel colour score white put a little bit on my palette and of course, as usual, a little bit of water. And all I'm going to be do all I'm doing here is a little bit of tidy up. I'm using quite uh, like I say, quite watered down white. But the reason why I'm doing this will become apparent in a moment. I want to bring back up the whiteness just a tad. Because I'm not uh, going to be doing any OSL on this. I'm just doing this the quick way, but effective. But to do it, you need a clean white background. Um, so that's that area tidied up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit to the back here, which is always looks to me like a, a bit of a sort of like a leather pad so if we keep it nice and uh, watered down it'll flow very easily let's focus sorry guys it'll flow very easily to where I want it my big thumbs do keep getting in the way And of course, the all important icon. So, we're just cleaning up, redefining where the icon starts and ends. 
you can keep going back in and out onto this if you anything like me you'll keep splashing where you shouldn't be painting and uh, I want to get back in and touch it up but you know what see like I've just done it there I've gone onto an area of green that I shouldn't have done but in my defense I have got a camera tripod shoved under my nose so I can tidy that up in a moment so what I'll do is I'll just tidy this bit up guys and we'll be back okay so I've tidied that up but I've found with some of these models from the Dark Vengeance set that some of the castings on the shoulder pads aren't exactly perfect so you'll find that you've painted exactly within the line so to speak and yet for some weird ass reason then it doesn't look right it's, it's, you have actually painted it right it's just the moulds a little bit off so what I'm going to do now when I've cleaned that up with white I'm just going to give it a very light wash of uh, Argax Earth shade to give it some shade and try to hide the um, imperfections up a little bit. That's not so bad. Let's give it a little bit more. That's great. Okay, I'm just going to dry that, guys. Okay, so having dried that now, all I do then is go back in with the white on the raised areas just pick them back out just to give yourself some you know nice clean there we go nice clean lines just staying gently within the areas it's always tricky and a lot of you might very well, if you're anything like me, get paint where you don't want it. But you can always go back in, clean it back up. Be patient, see what I've done there. And there again. Gotta say guys, it's a right nightmare. Working with a tripod under your nose. So I'm going to have to go back in again with the Dark Angels Green and just tidy that a little bit up. <sighs> so let's do it then. Okay, so that's tidied that back up now. So what I'm going to be using now, I'm going to be using Citadel Colour Blood Red. Same procedure. So we'll just put some on our palette. It's just sort of like uh, pretty much like a, a one to one, I think. Basically, you're just improving the flow, so just add a little bit to it. And I'll start with the arrow. I'm just going to liberally apply, as you can see, it's really runny again, which is okay because that's what I want. Just moving it around the shape. Careful not to get any on the armor. By applying your paints this thin, I find you have much more control. You don't end up with any gloopy, horrible bits, any paint brush marks, I should say. important thing to do is to let it dry so you can always move over to another area now and start applying some of the red to the weapon deliberately leaving some of the uh, shaded areas untouched Essentially what you're doing is you're just building up a layer of red over the top of the scab red. Which gives the effect of the edges being darker this time, rather than lighter. If that makes any sense to you guys. I know I waffle on a lot. So... 
a little bit on there. Essentially building up the colour. So I'm going to go ahead on camera, off camera now and complete that process. Okay, so there are a couple of areas on this model that I'm going to do brown, or I'm actually going to use Citadel Foundation Kemi Brown. Um, because there is a little, what I'll do is I'm going to remove this just temporarily, so you can see there's like a, a little um, bit of a pack hanging on his waist. So I'm just going to really picking out with some Kemri Brown. Nothing fantastic, just enough to show that it is actually there. Let's just put a little bit more paint on my palette, guys, because I was a bit uh, tight. Let's oh, say, epic fail. Drop the brush. Spelt paint. Always a bundle of laughs watching my news. Okay, so where are we? Just want to complete on the side of here. That's it. And of course, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to put this back. No, it's not. There's a little bit of a leather pad on the end of these things. So I'm going to do that in Kemri as well. Just to speed up the process, you can pretty much use whatever brown or shade that you want to show, like a, a leather colour, if you wish, and anything like that. And then what I plan on doing is just giving it a little wash. And the bitch jobs are good and so yeah, let's put the mini back together. Okay, so let's dried the brown off. I'm going to return back to the Argax earth shade again. And on the rear butt of the uh, plasma gun, I'm going to give it a heavy wash. He says, when he hasn't got enough on his brush. There we go. Now he's got too much. Don't worry about it pooling, because when it dries, it'll dry quite uniform. In the areas that you don't want, just soak them back up with a brush. There we go, nice and subtle. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna epic fail that bit. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I actually shoved my brush in the wrong palette area and put the wrong colour on it. Yes, Marnius epic fails all the while. I'll do for that and then just a little bit on the pack underneath just to give it some shade. It's not an important piece. And there we go. Alright, let's take a look at how we're going to do the uh, plasma glare. Okay, for the uh, blast gun, I'm going to use Citadel Colour Ice Blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to apply it the same way that I did the green, the Dark Angels green. Highly watered down. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh, 
what's happening is because it's so thin the ridges are showing through may need two coats don't they yet have to be neat there we go let's give that a blast with the air dryer and see what it looks like that's not come out too bad but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply just a little more and I think I'm going to leave the top section alone and just do a little line down the side there Nothing too major, just to tidy up, and a little bit down this side. That's not so bad. So it gives it sort of like a, a semi-translucent blue, and it looks like a bit of an artificial glow going on there. So that's a quick, easy way of doing things like that. Uh, give it a quick blast with the air dryer and I'm just going to apply a little bit of wash. Okay, back onto the Argax Earth Shade. Now I am going to water this down and you will need to be just a little bit more careful as to where you apply it. And I want a little bit of shadow in the join here. Just to make the whole thing look tidier. And in those little holes. Let's get a bit more. There we go, epic fail again. Just put my brush in the wrong colour. And uh, it's very tricky to orientate this so you can see what I'm doing, but hopefully you'll be able to just in the recess. And if you're feeling brave, a little bit up the top there and around the edge. Makes the model look neater. There we go. That's not so bad. Perhaps maybe we could do a little bit on this rear section here. That's it. And down there. And I'm going to go back over that bit. There we go. And maybe back up with the ice blue. You should still some have, it. have some in your palette. Just merge it in a little bit. Not too much. Making sure that the corners of the uh, serrated area are hardly getting any blue on them because it helps with the glow effect. Yeah, I think that'll do, guys, for that for the moment. Uh, right, I'll give it a blast for the air uh, dryer. And then we'll go in and just highlight some of the metals just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to use a bit of mithril silver now. Um, just so you can see, guys. There you go. Just a little colour. Mithril silver. I'm going to use the fine detail brush from GW. Uh, basically, I've just loaded a little bit of paint onto my brush. And I'm brushing most of it off. Because... I don't want to go over mad on this bit, but all I'm going to do just focus on the ridges just at the back of the leg there dragging it over there, gives it a little bit of a shine, I'm not sure if you can see it guys but it's just a very minor highlight but will make a lot of difference to the way the model looks 
and it stood on the table just liberally here and there on some of the metal sections that you want to be a little bit more pronounced just drag your brush over it and what I'm going to do on the side of the plasma gun there's a little emblem just going to load a little bit more silver onto my brush and I'm going to highlight that emblem with the mithril silver that's nice, that shows out a lot better now and there are areas like on the wrist here where it could stand a little bit of a highlight just a bit, just on the top because believe me that's enough and some of the various little wires and tubes that are on this marine is that all of them? I don't think there's any more I can't see any anyway so yeah as you can see now that the metal on the back of the legs is popping a little bit more now and guys we're getting very close to the finished product now a little bit of highlight in there like so alright let's just do this a quick dry oh, before we do that what we'll do is we'll take that off there and get a little bit more myth mess over on my brush and just on some of the edges of the wings on the chest plate give it a little drag over and a little bit on the skull yeah that makes that pop just that tiny bit more and not forgetting very carefully over the two little pipes that are on his helmet Okay, and I've just noticed there's a couple of areas of green that could stand a little bit more on, so I'll do that now and we'll take another look. Okay, so I've had a look at the model and I'm quite happy with the way it's looking, so what I'm doing now is starting the base. I'm using Vallejo's Brown Earth uh, paste, it's for want of a better word, I can't remember what it's called, and I'm just literally liberally applying it to the base with a brush making sure that it peaks it goes on really well um, it accepts paint to it as well and pigments and you name it and it doesn't matter if I get a little bit on the foot here because it's such a perfect colour for my base thing when this is actually dry it actually dries the colour I want it as well for sand I do do a little bit of um, dry brushing over the top of it but as you can see it goes on very easily just needs a little bit round there What I'm going to do is just add a few blobs here and there because I want some texture on it. Apologies if I keep hiding the mini guys, it's, it's a nightmare doing a tutorial. But hopefully, I'm helping somebody out by showing you this stuff. So, there we go. You can see it's got a bit of a texture going on there now. Let's just clean my brush. I will uh, give that a blast with the hairdryer and uh, we'll see what to do next. Okay I've given that a blast with the hairdryer but while that's still curing I'm going to take some Citadel Colour Chaos Black and I'm just going to briefly paint around the rim of the base bringing it back to its original uh, colour before priming always finishes a mini off nicely once you do the base ties it all in brings it all back together makes it look more complete 
plus also if there's if it needs a little bit more uh, texture on the base you can always apply some at that point I think I've spotted a couple of areas on this one but overall it's not looking too bad so what do you think guys should I continue to make tutorials or are they as pants as I suspect they are because it is a bit of an art getting used to painting a mini with a tripod stuck up your nose but uh, I'll hopefully improve my setup as time goes by and learn a few things as to where to put the camera and how to do it and so forth but overall I think my biggest failing is I forget to keep the mini in shot so there it is what I'm going to do now guys I'm just going to give this a strong dry with a hair dryer and then we'll put some bleach bone on that sand okay taking some um, citadel colour bleach bone now I'm literally going to just dry brush the top end and the peaks of the sand just to give it a little bit of definition I've got to be careful because it's not fully dry yet and now if I make this a little bit more thicker hopefully it won't be epic fail just drag it over just to show the peaks a little bit. I should allow a greater drying time really. Come on focus camera. Let's move this out a little bit. But just enough. Give it a little bit of definition. And we're nearly there guys. Nearly finished. Just a simple way of painting a dark angel. That's how I'll be doing all of mine in the future. I don't plan on having a massive force, but I want a sizable one. Probably about 2,000 points, something like that. But this is definitely the way I've opted to paint my armour. And the general colour scheme, a very clean looking army, the complete opposite to my lunar walls really. But, there you go. That's pretty much it guys. That's how I will be painting them. I won't do it uh, right now, but I will apply a decal layer, number 3, the same as our sergeant previously. And I hope that was uh, a help to you guys, that's how I'll be painting my Dark Angels like this video if you'd like me to do some more tutorials and uh, it's been a pleasure so cheers for watching guys don't forget to comment right, subscribe and hang on for the end of the vid because i'll showcase this mini and the paints i used cheers